Hi, this is Zach with Warren Wound, and today I'll be taking a look at the Triton Sub Fotique. Triton uh, is actually a brand that existed in the 60s, uh, and they made a single watch, uh, to my knowledge, uh, the Triton Dive Watch. And it has been recreated just recently, a kind of a re-establishing uh, of the brand with the goal of kind of bringing back this rather interesting and uh, exotic uh, design that was from the 60s. Uh, and what's really interesting kind of to start off is that, um, you know, I think often when people bring back historic designs, you know, it's with the goal of kind of building off of nostalgia and like an iconic look. But the original Triton was actually extremely rare uh, and not... Uh, I think really a very well-known watch. Certainly it's not a watch that's like highly pursued uh, in current vintage markets by anyone except for, uh, you know, real enthusiasts for that watch and for dive watches, for military watches. So the original watch was, it came out in 1963 and it was available only at uh, the Spyro Technique uh, dive watch stores, which later became uh, aqua lung stores. It was not really meant for mass consumption. It was meant for per diving professionals and for uh, military divers, so really, you know, elite divers. Uh, it was designed by a, uh, you know, French uh, uh, military personnel who uh, was a watch enthusiast who came up with patents and concepts for improving the water tightness of watches, of dive watches, and was really just trying to make a better dive watch for professionals. So he came up with these interesting concepts for how a crown could sit at 12 and how it could be protected. Uh, obviously, the design here, the most kind of shocking thing about it is this hinged sort of uh, crown guard at 12 and the 12 o'clock uh, crown as well. Um, in addition to being just really specialized in social specialized stores, it was actually the most expensive dive watch at the time when it came out, coming in at 682.5 francs. So that was actually a little bit higher than a Rolex Submariner at the time. Um, and I think that kind of just says really what it was. This wasn't a watch for casual purchasing. It was a tool that was meant to be you know, purchased as a precision tool. So these days, kind of coming back to it, Triton, the brand now, um, did a, you know, it's an interesting recreation of the watch, kind of st you know, stuck to the original design, um, a little bit, you know, some changes overall, but the, the general aesthetic and certainly the kind of characters that made uh, the original design so unique are still here, particularly the, hinges, the hinged lugs and the kind of bezel insert style. But unlike most brands, they're actually also pursuing that concept of exclusivity as well. So uh, rather than uh, pricing it you know, uh, accessibly and making it very available, um, it's very limited availability and the price is actually rather high. It's at $6,200. So you know, I think that's obviously going to be a non-starter for a lot of people. Um, and whether or not this watch is you know, uh, specifically worth that much money, you know, it's kind of a hard conversation, but I think they're trying to target a certain uh, uh, audience with it. And like I said, they're trying to uh, pursue this exclusivity. But anyway, looking at the design, why I really like this watch is because it's just fascinating looking and kind of you know, awesome. So looking at the case now, it's a 40 millimeter case in width, 41 millimeters, millimeters at the bezel. Measuring lug to lug is obviously tricky because you have this hinge here. So at its widest or longest, it's 55.7. At its shortest, if you can totally compress it, it would be about 47 millimeters. But in reality, the hinge just lets it kind of conform to your wrist. So it does literally hang over, but then it flexes down, and that makes it comfortable. And then with the smaller lug to lug, it actually, you know, I think it's a very nicely sized watch. I do believe it grew a little bit from the vintage piece, but at 40 millimeters, you know, it's not very much. And frankly, a fantastic size, I think, for a modern or vintage uh, sport watch. It's about 13.2 millimeters tall, which um, I think is actually deceptive because that sounds a lot taller than it is. It sits really nicely on the wrist, kind of low. A lot of the height actually comes from the case back, which has like a stepped design to it. So that kind of fits into your wrist. And then obviously you have height from the bezel and the dome sapphire crystal here. Um, looking at the bezel, this is also, this is probably my favorite design element actually of the watch. So you have this beautiful sapphire insert here that is like 100% true to at least the graphics of the original. What I love about it are these uh, uh, numerals at the intervals of 10. So you, 
Each numeral has a larger digit for the 10 digit and then a smaller zero. That really puts an emphasis on that number and just has a very cool vintage look to it. It's like a very stylized uh, detail that I think was purpose driven at first. Obviously that number is more important than the uh, second number, um, but it came out just very kind of an interesting and stylish look. And that's all done in uh, C3 uh, Superluminova, so it glows super bright. Um, the case itself, you know, designed very simple. It's a barrel shape with faceted lugs and brushing on it. Um, it definitely speaks to the 60s, but if you look at this compared to what other dive watches from that time period looked like, it definitely is kind of a, an exotic design and, definitely, and very uh, interesting case shape, a little bit uh, more forward thinking, uh, certainly. Uh, looking at the dial, the dial is interesting. It's very, uh, it's very simple. It's very elegant in its simplicity. It has a very classic dive look to it. Um, there was some conversation amongst us that at $6,200, is this what you want on a dial? Do you want more? But, you know, frankly, breaking away from uh, the original look, putting in applied new, like indices and white gold or whatever have you, would really break from the tradition of the watch. As is, the design is a little bit different, but I, from having looked at the vintage, think they balanced that a little bit better here. So, for you have for the main uh, index here, Classic dive markings, circles for the hours and rectangles at uh, three, uh, sorry, at 12, six, and nine. At three, you have a date window. One thing that's a nice difference, on the original, all those markers are actually pushed really far into the center. So there's a lot of space around them, which was kind of strange looking. Outer edge of the dial, then you just have a white index with um, individual minute and second marks and, inter and numerals at uh, intervals of five. So just adding to kind of legibility. Obviously, those main dive markings uh, jump out. They're loomed also with C3 Superluminova. And when you look at them, you can see the C3 Superluminova is kind of built up in a nice way. So they have a little bit of a bubble effect and they glow uh, extremely well. Looking at the date window at three, this reveals actually something really cool here that you can see. The seven is red on white. This features a roulette date wheel. So that means that the uh, odd numbers are red and the black and the even numbers are black. That's something that you know you saw an occasion on vintage watches, uh, watches in the 60s, 70s. I think it's a really cool concept, a little more fun, a little bit more daring. Um, at least you know it's it's a it's, it has a concept to it, um, and that is a custom element. So actually, while on that, I should just jump in quickly to the movement. This watch is powered by a modified Soprod A10-2, um, which you know as we know is a well-made uh, Swiss automatic movement. They modify it by decorating it, by changing the date wheel and also by using a parachrome hairspring, which supposedly is greater shock protection and greater uh, protection against variation of temperature. Um, but in a $6,200 watch, obviously, uh, you know, we've seen so prize in watches far less expensive, 1,500, uh, you know, kind of an up from there. It's certainly a high quality movement and certainly decoration, everything changes things, but is it really the value of $6,200, you know, um, that's, that's, you know, kind of a different conversation. Uh, looking quickly at the hands here, these are, you know, true to the original and a really great handset. So the hour is this very sharp but short sword. And then the minute is sort of an extension to that short sword that goes out to this really large triangle. So you obviously have uh, an emphasis on the minutes. Um, and this would, I believe, predate the, plon you know, plo prof kind of plongeur style. So you can see the ideas there coming forward. Um, and once again, that's because it was a dive watch, you know, by a diver. Looking at the watch, considering it on the wrist and looking at the strap, so I think this watch wears really well and is just very cool looking. You know, considering the original was a tool and I think at the time was probably crazy looking, now looking back we see these designs as just being uh, very original and very unique and compared to what's coming out today, especially from mass market Swiss brands, you know, just really daring and really kind of... Um, uh, more design driven and less, you know, about just selling huge numbers. So you have strange things going on here and they come together to, you know, look really nice in my opinion. Uh, the hinged uh, lug is obviously a strange sort of industrial look, but to me what dominates this honestly is this big fat sapphire bezel with these great numerals on it. They have just a very like, uh, just a nice vintage look. And then the watch just fits very well. I think at 40 millimeters, like I said, it's a great size. It's very comfortable. Crown being at 12 also removes it from being dug digging into your wrist at all. So that's very comfortable. Um, and so, you know, I think there's a logic to this design. I think crowns at 12, if they weren't a little strange looking and you didn't need to build systems like this, would actually be a lot more common because it makes a lot of sense to have a crown there. 
Looking at the strap, um, there's two choices for the strap for this watch. Both um, have an interesting construction. So what we have here is actually genuine Louisiana gator, but in a rubber housing. Um, so the, the, the gator is actually inlaid in this like injection molded rubber piece. So the rubber comes up around the side and it's on the back. And then that's all stitched in. I don't specifically know the water, uh, you know, resistant properties of gator. So I don't know like if that's something you actually want to swim with, but certainly the uh, watch, uh, the rubberized elements do suggest that that is a, you know, a strap to take in the water. Um, the buckle is a really nicely executed buckle, um, custom buckle. Clearly it's got some nice brushing on it, a little bit of polished bevel. It obviously matches uh, the case design here or at least corresponds to it. So I think that's really nice, like how these lugs point in and then how that points out. So there's just like a, a correspondence between the two. So overall, you know, I think the Triton recreation, uh, it's a really well done watch. You know, it's beautiful, it's well made. Um, I think the, the execution is great. I like that they stayed really true to the original, but fine tuned things to make it um, a little bit more modern. You know, a couple of actually details I definitely should have mentioned that I left out. This one does have a 500 meter, meter water resistance. So that's obviously a really high, photo, um, high water resistance. And that's actually where it gets its name from, subphotique, meaning below the photic zone. Uh, 500 meters down, there's no light in the ocean, so that's what that's all about. And there's a helium escape valve at three, so implying you know you could do saturation diving with this. So those are features that obviously would not have been on the original and imply that this isn't just like an aesthetic recreation. You should take this diving if you want to kind of perhaps experience that vintage diving feel. I do not do that. I don't know if I recommend doing that, but you know I think that's what they're kind of building into this. But at $6,200, this is a watch that's not going to be, you know, uh, you know, something you're going to run out and get. I think it's going to have a very uh, specific uh, kind of uh, customer base, people who knew about the original, are real dive watch enthusiasts, and frankly have the money to spare. For the rest of us, I think this is a watch to just admire the aesthetics and the uh, design concepts going on, especially considering that a lot of that these all came from uh, the early 60s showing just how forward-thinking kind of uh, watch design was at the time. Uh, so please read the hands-on article on Warner Wound. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you.